Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Enjoying the snow. So lame. Um, <clears throat> okay, so today I'm so excited because I'm going to use my captive audience to really talk about editing uh, and revising because I feel like it is the one thing that is like so of, of such utmost importance, but that I, I never quite really get out um, and get the importance of out to people. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to model revising today for you for my own writing. I just forced myself to write for 10 minutes, um, which is a, maybe a little bit of an inauthentic uh, model. But um, I, I made myself, I did, did go back a few times and reread and change. But I, I worked really hard on not changing what I was writing so that I can show you my revision process on the screen and you can kind of see what I'm doing when I write. I'm, I have an idea for a story um, that I've had in my head for a long time and I have never written. Uh, I think it's kind of a fitting time actually to write it. So I feel like it's gonna be really influenced by what's happening in the world right now. Um, we'll, we'll see, you know how it is with stories. Sometimes they don't come out at all the way you're expecting them to. But my idea is, um, so after a woman has a baby, and like a biological child, the DNA of that baby, like your, ch my children's DNA is like in my blood after my, after the babies are born, they like become a part of you and they call it chimera, which is actually, I'm not sure for sure how you pronounce that word. I'm going to do a screen share real quick. Um, so we can just look that up together. So, um, it's, it's spelled like this and it's actually a Greek word, um, for, I, you know what? Yeah. Greek mythology. It's a, for a monster with, uh, yeah, with the body of a lion, a snake's tail and dragon wings, I think is what it is or goat. It's something about a goat too. I don't know what that is with the snake tail. I think it's a body of a lion something head of a lion body of a goat anyway it's a creature made of three creatures and then chimera in women is when oh goodness hmm i don't know why there's all the bunch of ladies in their bras um i'll take that off images maybe it's something else too that i don't know about um not that those were. So um, it is when um, you have different DNA cells in your body and you can have that from pregnancy. Um, I'm not a scientist. I just read an article about it one time and I was super interested in it. Where, where am I? I'm going to go back to Zoom. Um, and I thought it would be a super interesting story to write about a future world where either, and I haven't quite decided this yet, there's some sickness, like either it's cancer has gotten really out of hand. Um, and I, I was thinking about using cancer or some other like terrible sickness has happened that, um, but they've discovered that the way to cure it is to use your mother's blood. But then when your mother, when the mothers give the blood to their children, that then they die. And that the story would be about a woman who is a mother who's found out that it's time for her to give, to save her child's life. Um, and then therefore she'll die. And so it's like gonna have a dystopian thing. Like you, I, I think you can only have to have one kid because otherwise how would that work if you needed to try to save more than one kid? And also like you have to have a kid. And I think that I'm gonna work on like creating a dissidence which, or like a separation between the mothers and the children where they can't like, have they don't have the same kind of relationship like they do here so lots of comments on like society and problems within society the way dystopian stories have but anyway that's my idea and it's been in my head for a long time so i'm i started that today so i wrote for 10 minutes uh very well uh, i mean i wouldn't say it's very stream of consciousness but i didn't edit while i was writing um and i did this because i feel like this is a the way a lot of you when you write stories this is what you do. You just kind of get your ideas out on paper. And it's actually really brilliant. And it's one of the reasons why I love teaching young people writing is because it's just, it's just such a great way to write. And it feels so good. Um, and it's, 
it's so creative and like true. And I think it's something a lot of grownups can't do anymore. But <laughs> the problem with it is, um, well, the ideas are so great that then what you have is you have a, you have a rough draft, you have a real rough draft. Um, and it really needs a lot of work in order to become something that can be readable to other people. Um, but I've noticed that a lot of times kids have a hard time going back. And so today I'm going to show you how very hard that is and model the revision process of this story that I have started. I got about half a page done in the 10 minute timer that I set myself. And um, I'm going to show you really exactly how to do it. And I, I want to show you this in a very like detailed manner. I know I've modeled my writing before, but I really want you to pay attention to the things I'm doing. The, the, the first thing I'm really going to be doing is I'm reading my story out loud. Now, obviously I'm doing that because I'm teaching you, but this is what I would be doing. Even if I wasn't teaching you, I read it out loud. It's that's, you have to, you have to read your writing out loud. Um, I'm also changing it many times. I'm going back and I'm redoing. I'm not sure that I'll delete things, but I probably will. Um, but it's not just one time through. I'm not just looking for grammar. I'm making the whole thing better. And that's really what revision is. And a lot of times in writing, teaching, there's editing checklists and there's these rules and like follow these rules. And because they're like, oh, I did it. I checked, I checked for that. I checked for that. I checked for that. I'm done. But you haven't necessarily made your writing better. And that's really where we want to get to is that place of making writing better. Um, cause your ideas are great and your first initial sort of getting it all out there is awesome, but that is, you're just like a little bit onto the process. So let's go to my story, which is in this untitled document. Can you guys still see me when I'm showing you the screen? I can still see me, but I don't know if you can. All right. So I have this here. I'm going to actually make it um, bigger and a larger font, maybe. Um, I named the character's daughter Maggie, which is Miss McGowan's daughter's name, which now I think of the main character as Miss McGowan. Um, We'll have to see if we can make her a little bit like Miss McGowan. Okay, my first sentence. The letter came as she knew it would. I'm okay with that so far. She had imagined it coming while she stood in the rain or just before she left for vacation or as she was standing on a train platform. It seemed fitting that she be standing or sitting in a very poignant and movie-like setting location when she received the news. Okay. Not totally in love with my second three sentences, but I'm definitely not in love with this one. That's a terrible sentence. Okay, so she had imagined it coming while she stood in the rain or just before she left for vacation. I like those two. I'm gonna delete that one because I don't like it. It seemed fitting it come as it would in a movie. Okay, let's see if that's better. So, deleting, I've deleted two big things. And now you'll notice I'm, I'm four sentences and I'm going back, I'm rereading. The letter came as she knew it would. She had imagined it coming while she stood in the rain or just before she left for vacation. It seemed fitting it would come as it would in a movie. It seemed fitting it come, would come as it would if she were in a movie. Okay, let's start. The letter came as she knew it would. She had imagined it coming while she stood in the rain or just before she left for vacation. It seemed fitting it would come as it would if she were in a movie. Uh, I'm not in love with this. Uh, come back to this line. So, um, I, I don't, it's still, the flow is off for me. I'm, I don't know. I, it's the first paragraph. It's a really important paragraph. I want to draw the reader in. I really like my first line. I might get rid of this whole thing and do go in a different direction, but I'm not quite ready for that right now. But I'm not just going to leave it. I'm going to leave a little note to myself. I know I want to come back and make that work. 
this would be something that if I were to have a writing conference with my writing teacher, my wonderful writing teacher named Miss Ryan, I would be like, oh yeah, Miss Ryan, I needed some help with my, my first paragraph. I can't quite get it, get it to flow. That's a really good thing to talk about with another writer because they can give you some feedback on that. So I'm gonna move on for now, but I'm still a little like, Ugh, with that. Okay, so second paragraph. Instead, she was just sitting at her kitchen table drinking a cup of tea and reading her book when her phone dinged. Instead, get rid of just, she was at her kitchen table with a cup of tea going cold before her and a barely begun book in her hands. Okay, so what I just did there, oh, I gotta keep this phone ding in there. Uh, barely begin, no. I barely started and, I've, and a, I'll just say new book. Okay, so let's see that sentence. Instead, she was at her kitchen table with a cup of tea growing cold before her and a new book in her hands. I like that. What I did there is I just took a sentence that I'd written that was a pretty boring sentence and I made it more literary. I made it more flowy, pretty, you know. There's really not a way to describe that. I just made it like more descriptive. A cup of tea growing cold before her and a new book in her hands sounds better than she sat at her table drinking tea and reading. Just has a better flow to it. Um, uh, she Okay, so I need to get the fact that her phone dinged in here because that's important to the next part, but I'm gonna delete that part. She finished the page she was on before picking up the phone after she heard the ding. Okay. Instead, she was at her kitchen table with a cup of tea growing cold before her and a new book in her hands. She finished the page she was on before picking up the phone after she heard the ding. Nope, I'm gonna move this um, to there. After she heard the ding, she finished the page she was on before picking up the phone. I like that, we're good. So, so far I like this. And I like that, I just don't like that last, that sentence there. Um, even though the ding was the ding, the ding that foretold of government issued announcements and mandates, she still didn't immediately think it would be a warning for the letter. Okay, so this is where I'm getting into like some of my de details about my dystopian world and that it's the future. And I, this is a really important detail that I've decided to add in because I wanna establish that it's not like the world we're in right now. Um, so I definitely need to keep this in here, but this is an awkward sentence. So after she heard the ding, oh no, even though the ding was the ding, that's a just the ding that foretold of government issued announcements and mandates, she still didn't immediately think, she didn't, she still didn't immediately think, maybe I can just say of the letter. She still didn't immediately think of the letter when she heard it. There she, well, there we go. Okay. Instead, she was at her kitchen table with a cup of tea growing cold before her and a new book in her hands. After she heard the ding, she finished the page she was on before picking up the phone. Even though the ding was the ding, the ding that foretold of government issued announcements and mandates, she still didn't immediately think of the letter when she heard it. Um... Yeah, I think that works. She thought maybe her block, okay, she thought instead, I already said instead. Um, okay, maybe uh, I'll say, as she unlocked her phone, she, idly thought maybe her block was on lockdown again. Or perhaps there was another virus cropping up and she needed to turn on her tracking location so they could complete contact tracing. I don't know if I'm gonna leave this in here, you guys. This is like so, it's like so, um, 
um, pandemic and like, I don't know, it's maybe a little bit cheesy because it's so like timely. Um, so we'll see. I, I might change this to a different detail, but I was just thinking about how um, they're saying that they want to like have people track their where they were so that if they need to do contact tracing once we all enter the world again they can do it and then people are saying that that's like creepy and like dystopian society-ish so I, I don't know if I'm gonna leave that in there but it's a future detail of some kind okay so uh, another thing you're going to notice that I did and I want to point this out because this is something that a lot of times when middle school writers write they don't use paragraphs and I and I purposefully tried to not Put paragraphs in so you could see me doing that. This was all one paragraph and I'm now have made it into three. Um, once again, there's not like a clear rule in this with fiction. It's not like I can say to you, do it after this time, but um, you know, kind of breaks in the action, you know, changing of scenery, changing of thoughts, any sort of major moment um, or minor moments, right? I mean, I have barely begun the story. I'm in my third paragraph. We don't even really know what's happening yet. Um, you want to put those paragraphs in. So if you're going along and you're, you're realizing that you're having a long section of time where there's not paragraphs, you, you want to stop and get them in. So I, I did one here, and then I just did that here as I did this transition with as she unlocked her phone um, to, to give that, to help break that up for the reader. Um, and it's something you really want to pay attention to while, while you're going back and, and revising. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to read the whole thing again um, now that I've made some changes to see how these three paragraphs are flowing. I know you're probably sitting there thinking, well, you're probably sitting there thinking this is so boring and you're probably sitting there thinking there's no way Miss Ryan would be doing this if she wasn't doing it for us. And I'm going to tell you, I would. This is how I write. This is how people write. I mean, real published authors do this and then they do it again and then they send it to their editor and then their editor makes them do it like four more times. Um, so this is, this is the process. A lot of times what you write at the end is very not at all like what you'd written in the beginning. Um, so it is, it is writing the initial story and getting the idea is a very small part of the process. Um, and I promise you that if you do this, if you take this time, especially right now when you have time and especially right now when you can be sitting in your bedroom and be talking out loud to yourself and there's no one around to think that you're crazy, you're, you'll be so pleased with your end result. All right, so I'm gonna start from the beginning, read everything that I have, see how it sounds. The letter came as she knew it would. She had imagined it coming while she stood in the rain or just before she left for vacation. It seemed fitting it would come as it would if she were in a movie. I still don't love that sentence. Oh. Instead, she was at her kitchen table with a cup of tea growing cold before her and a new book in her hands. After she heard the ding, she finished the page she was on before picking up the phone. Even though the ding was the ding, the ding that foretold of government issued announcements and mandates, she still didn't immediately think of the letter when she heard it. As she unlocked her phone, she idly thought maybe her block was on lockdown again, or perhaps there was another virus cropping up and she needed to turn on her tracking location so they could complete contact to contact contact tracing, something like that. Instead, when she checked, she realized it was the ding for the letter. Ooh, I need to change that to the, and since, oh, no, no, I don't. For a letter, it was a ding announcing a letter. It was a ding foretelling. It was a ding announcing a letter. We'll say announcing. Announcing a letter. And since there were only a few letters that warranted dings, she immediately knew it was time for her letter. Okay, this is garbage. This is a garbage paragraph, y'all. Um, instead, when she checked, she saw it was, she saw she had at last received her letter. Okay, so um, she saw. All right, so that is an example of just sometimes you write something that you don't need and you just delete it. You just get rid of it. You just get rid of it. If it's too wordy, if it's weird, if it's all over the place, if you're like, what was I thinking when I wrote that? 
you delete it. You just delete it and it'll, you'll be better off and it's okay. Instead, she, when she checked, she saw she had at last received her letter. Her first thought was, of course, for Maggie. Okay, I'm going to stop here. <laughs> I don't know how long I've been talking, um, but I feel like it has been for a while, and then I'm probably starting to lose you, um, which is fine. I get it. YouTube videos can be boring. Um, I don't know that I'm, I may do this again tomorrow. I know it's kind of boring, but I really do think that if you guys – can watch me and see how important this is, then, and then do it yourself. You really truly will become better writers. Um, or I may do something else tomorrow. I haven't decided yet. Um, but I also know that I was getting real into like a tough part while I was, <laughs> while I was writing these next two paragraphs and it's going to take me a while and I'm not going to put you through that right now. Um, but what you should do, what you should take this to mean is you should take this to mean that it takes a while to write and it takes a lot of changes and it takes a lot of going back. And, um, I may, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'm going to think about tomorrow. Um, but that's what the point of this is. Uh, tomorrow there will. So if you watch to the end of this, hopefully you did, uh, know that tomorrow there will be something you're going to do by the end of my lesson that you're going to need to get done. So you can't skip it. Um, okay. That's it. I hope you're well. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have fun writing. I know I had fun doing this. I will see you soon. Oh, wait, I wanted to show you my ridiculous dog first. I was going to do this at the beginning of the video. Oh, he's not doing it anymore. He was sleeping in a really funny way. Okay. I'll show him tomorrow. All right. Goodbye, my loves. I will talk to you soon.